Play by Play on Sports Joe and Her, brought to you by AIG, in support of 20 by 20. Hello and welcome to Play by Play. I'm Jenny Murphy. You're very welcome to a brand new show on Sports Joe and Her, um, in association with AIG and in support of the 20 by 20 campaign. So on this week's show, we're going to talk a little bit about Arsenal's win at the weekend. We're going to go into seventh place, Sinead Diver in the London Marathon. Um, words of the week, there's going to be some fisticuffs thrown. Let's do it. I'm not going to lie, she's probably going to take you there. <laughs> um, there's going to be ructions. Um, but first, we want to say just welcome to the first episode. Um, it's going to be a new weekly sports show focused on women in sports. But first, I want to remind you guys about a competition. So All Ireland, Ladies All Ireland tickets are up for grabs with an overnight stay in a hotel. All you need to do is get on social media um, and tag us play by play. Um, I want to introduce my guest panelists today. So first up, um, Dublin GAA footballer Neve McAvoy. Hey girl, thanks hey for girl. having me. Hey girl, what's going on? <laughs> um, I'll do that to you as well. And Sports Joe editor Conan Doherty. Uh, oh, I bought it, but it's okay. Conan what? Doherty. Doherty. Conan, Conan's a hard, like it's tricky. You got it's Conan, not, right? it's not, I got Conan, Conan and then I just, I was proud of myself and Conan. I just rolled with it. It was already a bad start as well, but you had Dublin, GA, Football, all Ireland the winner, Barbarian. Neve McAvoy. Well, and I'm not starting again. That was the third one. Like, I, I think I nailed that one. <laughs> no, I think Thoughts. we're going to go. Yeah, this is as good as it's going to go. <laughs> Keep expectations high. Oh, so we're keeping Doherty in there. <laughs> I was trying to say no. <laughs> yeah. No, that was great. Thank you. See, supportive already. <laughs> this is what I need. When it comes to competition time, I'm already leaning towards you for the victory. So. <laughs> You've started off well, Mackers. You've started off well. Um, so do you want to give us a little bit of a, an introduction to yourself? Because that's not awkward at all. Um, yeah, I suppose I'm Neve McFoy. I think I'm okay sound. <laughs> um, I play Gaelic football for St. Sylvester's in Malahide and for the Dublin Senior Ladies football team. And um, I'm 28 and I'm having a mid-twenties life crisis and I'm back in college. <laughs> nice. Star sign? Libra. Good. There you yeah. go. I suppose that's all I really have to say for now. Any all, any all Ireland medals? Oh, oh yeah. Two, three of those. Ah, <laughs> three of those. Three let's, of those. let's not make this a question in the show. <laughs> I love, I love the way Neve finished the 28 as mid 20s under the fence. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> mid, I don't want to say mid life crisis, so I was trying to. I was taking that back, yeah. Oh, age, star sign, all Ireland medals. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> We're off nailing this so far. This is great. Don't have to answer any questions. Perfect. So. We get into it, or just wanna wanna come on, Connor. That's like sports editor of Joe. That's something sports to be editor. proud of. Yeah, come on. Well, sports it. Editor of Sports Joe, you're, you're making me forget what my job is now as well. Sorry, it was the, your first name threw me and then it just steamrolled from there. So. Editor of Sports Joe, footballer with uh, rivals of Sylvester's, North Scary County Harps. Dublin, yeah. Yeah, big Fingal rivalry there. And uh, it all earns it. Yeah. Sorry, what? Sorry? What? And all our no, yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Oh, okay. Oh, you can. He plays sports. Yeah, cool. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. Um, so I spoke to Louise Quinn earlier about oh. the Arsenal win. Any of you guys watched the game? Saw the highlights. Yeah, I only saw the highlights myself as well. But I was delighted for the two the two Irish girls in, in particular. I I know like they're they've been stalwarts of that team for for years and years. And obviously, I can relate to a bit of a seven year gap there for Arsenal getting the win. So yeah, it was nice. It's yeah, like twenty twelve last time that they've done a job and like game in hand. It's kind of nice as well. Bit oh, of yeah, relief. That's obviously yeah. a big cushion. Yeah. Beth Mead scored an absolute screamer in that game. Um, again, I just saw the highlights, but I straight away thought this might get nominated for a Puskas because it's just one of those ball, you know, one of those connections with the football where it's wobbling everywhere and it goes into the far top corner. You just like you're like you make the connection, you're like that's sweet. It's going straight in. <laughs> yeah, it's going straight in. Okay, so we have actually a video clip of some of the Arsenal guys who haven't won a piece of silver in a while, <laughs> um, but they're totally behind the women's team. So let's have a look at that. Champions, we are proud of you. Congratulations, girls. Arsenal ladies, congrats on winning the league. Champions League next year, Champions of England this year. Brilliant, another trophy in the cabinet. Congrats for the title. Amazing, amazing season. And we are very proud of you. Congratulations, guys, for winning the league. We are really proud of you. Come on, keep walking. Hi, it's Eddie and Kessie here. I'm just sending love and a big congratulations on winning the league. We're all proud of you. So that was the lads. 
another trophy in the cabinet, like as if they're contributing to it. Uh, there's some know? very awkward fist pumps yeah. there and stuff. But... Like, thanks very much for helping us because we're winning all the trophies. Like, go away. Like, you know, that was actually a really bad time they put out as well. Sunday, Arsenal men, had lo they lost 3-0 to Leicester. And then they put this out on the Twitter account and like the reaction underneath was like, take this down and stuff. But then a lot of people were like, can they, can the women's team play with us for the rest of the season? Because <laughs> <laughs> they are, they are the Arsenal women's team are the most successful English side in that competition. Mm. I think they won yeah, it 15 ever, yeah. times, which is insane. Yeah. yeah. And like this, this league competition that was 17 wins out of 19, that's insane. Yeah. And Man City, who are chasing them, haven't lost. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it just shows you the competitiveness of it and how good they had to be to stay ahead of them. Exactly, yeah, with a game, game in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I went to watch um, one of their games uh, playing against Reading and, like, joy to watch. Really nice football. A lot of it was on the deck, just accurate, like, precision passes. It was, just, like, if you're over there and you have free weekend, go, 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 see them. go, go see them. Like, yeah. I, the, and, like, especially those teams, like, you know, Man City, Arsenal, Chelsea, they've mm. definitely set the benchmark in the last couple of years as well. So, and obviously my best team, best, best mate plays them as, with Arsenal as well. So free kid from what? <laughs> <laughs> I know, there's definitely added like kind of benefit there for us. Like I'd go and see, I'd be particularly interested in the two girls, you know, Katie and Louise. Like that's incredible. Like that we've two girls playing in the best team in England at the minute. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So, then with regards to the lads, like, I don't think it's necessarily a negative thing that the lads were, you know, I yeah, know, yeah. like, obviously they're not successful in themselves, but, like, they do naturally have a much bigger bigger profile and it's no harm, like, when you're trying to grow something like that to get some support from, like, yeah. the male counterparts. Like, I know we'd always appreciate it with Dublin and there is a huge respect there and, you know, we'd see each other, we train the same place, see each other, I train, there's a respect there for the level of yeah. work that goes in and stuff. I'm not sure if it's the same in Arsenal, but I'm sure they'd see each other around the, pla around the place and stuff, I don't know, but you sort of got a lot of support off, off the lads. I know... I remember somebody sang a song one time to try and get you electric picnic tickets. I can't remember. Okay, what an absolute legend. So we just we just came back from the 2014 World Cup and we done all right. And um, because we... I, do you know when you're in the lead up to a competition or anything and at a big focus, there's nothing really beyond it. Yeah. So obviously none of us bought electric picnic tickets because oh, it was yeah, all like course, yeah. World Cup. And then we came back and we're like, oh no, we're going to miss out. And I think someone put up a social media, put, Keen Healy put up a post saying, you know, any chance the girls can get some um, tickets, tickets for... Oh, it's Keen Healy, yeah. yeah. Oh, so funny. And they, I think, somebody put back like, yeah, no worries, we'll get the girls tickets if you do a music video from one of the acts that's playing in Electric Picnic. <laughs> oh, no. <That's> amazing. <laughs> so, cue, right? So, one of the guys, Sam, was playing the piano, fake playing the piano, and then there was steam coming up from behind the piano. <laughs> now, later we found out it was a kettle being boiled constantly and Keen Healy in a wig and then just giving, blaring out Bonnie Tyler like an amazing lip sync. Ah, yeah. That's way better than what the Arsenal lads do. <laughs> but it's like, oh my God, you've lost support. <laughs> when you get like that kind of genuine support and it's not here, say something, it's yeah. because it's, it's you're told. Team, yeah. It's that like, I think that genuine mm. caring is like it does it does mean an awful lot because like you do work hard Dublin ladies work hard all county teams women's they put in a huge amount of effort same for the women's rugby team I'm sure the soccer team as well mm. so when you get that from your male counterparts it's just a nice thing like yeah, yeah so what and I free think tickets is, class yeah free tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but I think straight away when you were talking about the men's support is mm. was it 2017 it wasn't last year's final yeah. against Mayo and yeah. it kept, the camera kept shooting to Jack McCaffrey I and know. James McCarthy but that was genuine like yeah. they were so happy for us because obviously we'd had so much upset for so many years and we'd know the lads like we like interact on the regular basis <laughs> and uh, yeah we know them really well and that was totally genuine and someone said to me afterwards like you're not annoyed that I kept flashing to the lads and I was like w why like you know Jack that's Sarah's brother mm. and obviously like Paul was up there go go is now married to Fiona Hudson like why would I be upset that it flashes up to them like that reaction was genuine like yeah. and they do have a profile and, and why shouldn't we use it to try and ra raise the profile of our, our sport? You know, it's not an us against them type thing. It's trying to get our our sport up to that level, like that profile. It's not like to their detriment type thing. But yeah, it, it can be sometimes spun in a negative light. But I know certainly from my own 
background like the sport we would get would be always very genuine and Keen Healy putting a wig on like I don't think you can yeah. ask for more <laughs> as well as that you're like you have you have like you know guys that are either professionals in the rugby <laughs> sphere or or in, in amateur and Gaelic but they're they're very good at what they do so if they're watching a game like I know during the World Cup we get some texts off the, the guys and it was purely from a coaching like perspective mm. they'd clearly clearly watch the games and were giving pointers and it wasn't disingenuous it was just mm. you know they they wanted to kind of put themselves forward so and you have that now if we've got like Mike Ross is currently in scrum coach for the women's team and brilliant. having that kind of it's it's brilliant I don't I don't mm. know why it would be kind of seen as negatively when it's when it's again like genuine I guess yeah so. exactly yeah that's exactly it all, all I can hope is that the the Arsenal guys were being genuine, but I think so, there was some so really genuine like, so enthusiastic. fist there. So. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to talk to Louise Quinn. She was playing at the weekend. Um, she's on the line right now, so we'll we'll cut to her. Louise, how's the head? It's uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's it's all good. It's um, I'm just about functioning um, at the moment, but yeah, feeling good. How does it feel to have another another medal? You know what? Very, very nice. It is, uh, yeah, to be champions with a team like Arsenal is, uh, it seems pretty surreal to be saying saying something like that. But uh, yeah, I'm able to do it now. So. And it didn't uh, didn't go down to the wire. A nice, uh, comfortable win in the end. Was it a tough game or was it exactly like the scoreline? Um, no, it was. It was... It was it was tough in patches, you know. We I suppose defensively we didn't we didn't have you know too many troubles, but they can definitely they definitely got some fast players, and we were expecting them to you know play some of those balls over the top and you know make something of it. But it, it was it was hard to break them down. You know, we definitely had patches where you know we just had to keep keep moving the ball, keep going, and um. But yeah, this, and you know if you if you've seen the goals. Uh, they were absolute quality as well. So, so are, you, are you hoping your teammates are going to hear you basically saying nice things about them? Is that it? Yeah, pretty much. Um, Any reason why you didn't yeah. get on the score sheet yourself? Um, that's a that's a touchy subject. Okay. Yeah, um, I just I just saw Katie got on there as well. Dina, yeah, there's a yeah. Uh, yeah, she yeah she's an attacker. You know, it's yeah. it's natural. It'd be it'd be strange if she didn't. Um, but yeah, you know, I was just, I was just making. You were just, you're just sitting all, back you know, watching them do the work. Yeah, exactly. Nice. It was a nice day. And a record, cor record crowd as well. Five thousand two hundred and sixty-five. It's not too bad. I know. Brilliant. Yeah. Now they were, you know, it was amazing to be playing in the in the annex and, um, you know, with that exactly with the biggest crowd of the, of the season so far and. Big, yeah, big Arsenal gonna, numbers. We're, we're gonna Sorry. Uh, yeah, there was. Yeah, good few travels for the game as well, which was great. Um, again, and so they literally they travel every game, so you know you can't. Uh, we literally wouldn't wouldn't be able to do it without them and their dedication to us and to to come to the games. And you you definitely have a favourite fan. I think you were telling me I was speaking to you a while ago. There is there's a pretty intense Arsenal women's fan. Yes, there is uh, Maria. Yeah. This yeah, Maria is an absolute legend. Uh just turned eighty, has been a fan of Arsenal for seventy years and literally comes to to every game, men's and women's. And uh yeah, she's been there with us right through the whole season and she's uh she's a legend. So it was definitely I think we were all absolutely buzzing to see her yesterday after the game. She's uh She's she's good for an old chance as well. She uh, she makes up some you know songs for the players and everything like that as well. So she, I, she I won't I won't ask you right now. Your voice doesn't sound the best, but um, I'm sure she'll be at the Man City game next week. It's nice to kind of wrap up, be safe. But any nice to end on a win at home as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the game. Yeah, the game is in a, in two weeks' time, and yeah, to be able to to wrap it up before we, you know to. <clears throat> To have won the league already before that last game, I think it, you know, definitely takes that bit of that bit of pressure off. And but then to be able to lift the trophy in front of our, you know, in front of our fans is going to be, you know, something really special. 
Louise, thanks so much for talking to me. I'll probably chat to you later. I tend to always call Louise right in the middle of when she's eating something. Mm. So I'm glad yeah. that I didn't I, this time. I held, I held off my dinner today for you. Great. You need it. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, yeah. Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Right, so that's Louise Quinn. Probably a little bit of background information. I'm not that mean to like people that I don't know at all. <laughs> yeah. Just You're a like, savage. It's okay. I know you. Girl. Yeah. Um, I've known Louise for years. So we played. Um, we played together um, with Piedmont United. So we were one of those like arch rivals at the start. Okay. Do you know, like mm. she's also tall. Hmm. That's my thing. <laughs> now she's way taller than me, so that's nothing I can compete with. Um, yeah, and we, we yeah we've been playing probably since. I don't know, 20, I don't know, since we were like 14 or 15, uh, going up through the ranks. So she was playing Ireland underage for years and I was not. <laughs> um, but yeah, we had Pretty some... <laughs> I can't imagine you staying at... I'd say you used to get sent off all the time. I was actually... No, it was actually okay. okay. <laughs> I had to have <laughs> that is pause. Shaker, yeah. There was oh. definitely something there. No, yeah. I, was, I was okay. I, I lacked I lacked a certain finesse. So I was, I was a centre back being like Jen Marker and just... Yeah, that was it. That's exactly what I was getting at. Nail okay, her. Okay, okay. But Forget was, about the ball. I, you stop her. I yeah. don't think I was ever yellow carded or red carded. I'm pretty well, sure. I'm pre in soccer. <laughs> yeah. Just to clarify. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In rugby, not so much. In Gaelic, not so much. Uh, yeah, actually, but that's because the Gaelic rules are really annoying. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> yeah. You just need to. Okay, get I'm, the not, ball. I'm, I'm not saying like, let's bring in full contact rugby tackling. But like a little shoulder every now and then would be nice. <laughs> Jen's little shoulder, by the way, is completely different from anyone else's no, little shoulder. Have you experienced like, it? Oh my god! I tried to like sidestep her one time, and I she floored me, and I couldn't, felt like I couldn't get up for a week. Yeah, you know, the reason for that was I couldn't sidestep quick enough to avoid her. <laughs> so so I kept going. So yeah. my sidestep was that poor. It was actually a straight line. <laughs> yeah, it was. That was more a reflection on you than of me. Of course. So. Yeah. Anyway, that's. That's my friend, doing very well. So if you want any Arsenal gear, no. <laughs> no chance. I just thought this was a ruthless interview style and I thought, this is great. Like, you know, this is what Jenny will oh, bring to the table. I believe it. I was like, you can't I'll, be telling I'll, me I'll not be to eat I'll be much nicer to everybody else that I don't know. Okay. I know you guys well enough so I can be mean. Anyway, competition time before I keep rambling some more. Um, so we're delighted um, that you've decided to watch or listen into the show. Um, so with that in mind, we are be, we're going to be giving out some tickets to the ladies all Ireland final with an overnight stay in a hotel. Um, so all you have to do is shout about us on social media. Please keep it positive because this is our first time doing it. So like, <laughs> stay nice. Um, with the hashtag play by play. So play x play, uh, which you'll see on the screen. So I didn't actually have to do that. Um, yeah, and you could be in with a chance of winning. Neve, you might want to enter this. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be straight up there. Free ho not well, if it's hotel. anything like the Cork game the other week, then maybe you might have to... Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> That's actually what I was getting We're going there, are we? <laughs> Listen, free for all. You Sorry, I missed it. I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. No, hopefully I will be involved. <laughs> Sorry, totally missed the cue. Like, I, I felt like I just went way too mean way too quickly there. So now I'm like... Backtrack, Jen. Mm. Your hair looks great. Oh, thanks, girls. <laughs> yeah, it looks really Yours, nice. You've really unleashed the hair tonight. It's not intentional. For the first one. Well, yeah. you might as well let everyone know what it's like. It's, it's natural um, habitat, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's large. Yeah. Um, you can hide stuff in it, and I have no real control over what it wants to do. So now we've discussed your hair, my hair. What have I walked into here? Conan. Tintin. Tintin. <laughs> I always said this oh, was well. off the record. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, enough enough with hair chat. I'm getting I'm getting Eve in the ear being like, Jen, come on, let's go. <laughs> so we're going to move on to marathon time. Sinead Diver, seventh. Impressive stuff. Have you watched some of the marathon? Yeah, it's a tradition to sit around watching the London Marathon and the Dublin Marathon. And it's just one of those things that you just take great pleasure in sitting on your arse, <laughs> eating <laughs> chocolate, and yeah. just watching these people go through hell, you know. It's a... Like hobnob in hand, being like, <laughs> yeah. I'd never do that. Uh, and then you see like this little tricolour coming up at the bottom of the screen, it's like, whoa, like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, yeah bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at us! <laughs> Immediately <laughs> Google them. we've achieved! Yeah. <laughs> so she was born in Ireland, but made in Australia. Yeah. That's yeah. the pretty impressive stuff. So she turned down, she turned down, um, 
representing Ireland at the Beijing. I think Olympics. Athletics Ireland um, make, made the qualifying time like 45 seconds faster that time. So I think that was kind of... Um, kind of pushed her towards running for Australia at that time. I'm not sure I can't say for, mm. for definite, but certainly what she's doing at the minute is super impressive. We'd love to say that she was representing us. We, we want we'll you back. We'll yeah. still cheer for her. Yeah. Like, even though you've got the Australian flag, <laughs> it's fine. We'll take some kind of little onus of credit. We love doing that yeah. as a nation and it's fine. We'll just bandwagon it. Yeah, I see um, in February as well, she like broke the record for the half marathon over 40 like person to get the record for half marathon, qualify for the Olympics already. Incredible. Um, it's a good couple of months for Sinead Diver. Oh and my she, she, only, she only started her career like in her 30s. She's incredible. Like She's like, I am like such fangirl. One of the club girls, one of the Sylvester's girls sent me a link this morning to an interview she did. And in the middle of the marathon, she just did a casual three minute and 10 second 1K. Like one of her Ks in the middle. I mean, have you ever done the 1K time track? Yes. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask I'm, you. I'm just, I'm just, because I'm even, I'm thinking like, would I ever do the marathon? No. <laughs> would you? No. Would you? Uh, no, I don't think so. Like, I like chasing footballs around. Yeah. yeah. But like, for that, just like we do one k, like lots of teams do it. Say with Sylvester's, we would have done in the past like a one k time trial, and like for this is just one isolated. Need to have a sit down after it. Like anything under for a female under three forty is like super impressive and she just threw a 310 in the middle of like lots of other 1k's like at, a joke. yeah incredible i just i can i can't even fathom it i'm like i'm actually like i'm picturing eating a hobnob donkey <laughs> like, that is so yeah impressive. no i i was like when she was speaking i was getting dizzy thinking about it because i was just thinking about the one you, you go all out for that 1k you're like okay oh. it's, it's it's kind of like it's not a sprint but you're yeah. Especially at the end, so... She did say that was a surge, like, that was a particularly quick 1K, and but then I think, like, her split was, like, 3.40. I mean, if I was doing a, a 3.40 time trial, and, and, like, lots of... I'm sure there's lots of... There's, of, um, obviously, like, there's lots of girls much fitter than me on, on my Sylvester's team, but, like, if I was doing that, I'd be giving myself such a big pat on the back, and, I mean, it's a sprint, like, it's as quick as I can for 1K, so, like, just put in perspective what she's doing at the minute at this age like not age aside like she's an incredible athlete like, mm -hmm. yeah but what's most amazing there is that like the time is obviously two hours 24 minutes like per mile for 26 miles oh. that, that is a joke of a, a mile joke. every time and doing it 26 times for two hours I know. two and a half hours I know like, how many Game of Thrones episodes <laughs> would you watch that I know Easter eggs <laughs> like I'm just kind of like I, I see I hear that and I'm like oh my god that's how long it takes me to get out of bed at the weekend <laughs> I know, I know. Like, if I, like, I just can imagine myself crawling over a finish line, like, do you know, it, like, just finishing a marathon. I know, obviously, like, these people train for these things, but, like, what an achievement to finish a marathon, but to do it at that pace is incredible. Like, she's phenomenal. See, what's scary now is that we've got a, a, an all Ireland winning midfielder saying this, <laughs> like, you know, and it's like, if you don't no, no, fancy this it... No, no, this is her plan, right? She's playing it coy, yeah. and she's kind of like, oh, like, one one kilometre or whatever, and then she's going to blitz <laughs> Without it. Without a three-minute yeah, <laughs> yeah, three one like, K. Yeah. yeah, that's her yeah. warm-up. Who's, who's, yeah. who's Lindsay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. Sorry, that's fake news. <laughs> it, was, it was said over the weekend, right, somebody, somebody said that the challenge of the marathon was diminished because so many people take part. Oh, well, I don't know. I can't agree with that. But like, yeah, but there, there are people taking part. Like Big Ben's taking part. Yeah, there, so there are bananas much. and yogurts taking part. Yeah. But they're not taking part and they're not in the race. Like, no, you know? yeah. yeah. They're all taking part and they're raising money for charity That's and, like... and having a bit of crack or doing their own achievement. But yeah. They're not in the race. There's like a few of them who are actually up at two hours twenty four. What are you talking about? Like, there's two hours of difference between a lot of these people. Jenny, what are you talking about? Yeah. Here, listen. <laughs> you know, it was written down and I read it out. Let's all That's agree kind of... that Neve was wrong to even put it on this sheet in the first place. <laughs> That's so, kind of one of those not things. Th not this Neve. This is Mackers. <laughs> Different Neve. Producer Neve. I'm Any aggression, wrong. you can send that to her on social media. So play by play, we'll take all the nice stuff. <laughs> and any bits that you didn't like, leave Mar. Just like, yeah, I'm going to look into camera for that for added effect. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I just think that comment, like, obviously, like, that's one of those things you'd say to junior infants. It's the taking part that counts. But, like, yeah, as Colm said, like, it's they're not in the race. They're just competing. They're probably raised money. Like, there's a huge, like, amount of people who 
are just trying to finish like cross the line as I would be crawling over the line as I said but and these the people like she led she led on her own like out of the pack on her own like right in the middle of the marathon like that's like mm. com- it, there's a complete difference between the people who are competing and com- people who are taking part like yeah there's a bit of a Mayo story in the end wasn't it <laughs> she, was, she was leading and then we all got excited and then she was seven and was like, oh ah no <laughs> that's taken away from her that's, that's yeah I was like whoa <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask though um, what is the toughest thing you've done fitness wise like drill wise or pre-season wise oh that is a tough one there were some absolutely horrendous ones. Like I do remember, um, I do like a lot of them were like up downs with runs and like a, yeah. a lot of turns, like so short bursts, minimal breaks, and you're just like I like I, there was some vomiting <laughs> being done. Yeah, there's, like I, oh yeah. yeah. There's definitely things you do like that. You know, you're just doing for your mental strength. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? You're kind of like I'm gonna get great like physical adaptations from this and I'm but like if I can get through this mentally I can do anything but uh yeah I don't know we'll there is a, a huge phase. there is once you're finished this even though you're like I can taste so much blood in my mouth you're like I've done it and yeah. it does give and like as I, a group I, like yeah even as it's because well. I wouldn't I definitely when I was doing like any fitness and stuff on my own like you'd be you'd be keeping a time but you're not chasing you're not oh, well I, yeah. I personally found it a lot harder to to kind of like get a faster time when you weren't running with someone yeah. or there wasn't that little bit of a competitiveness. So any kind of solo athletes like that, I genuinely don't know how they oh, do it. I don't know how they do it. I don't, like if I didn't have my friends telling me like I was a great woman and to keep going, I'd just honestly <laughs> give up yeah. years ago. Or shaming you to not do another oh, run or like, you know, going yeah. to yeah. The dreaded yo but, but finishing as a team, like something like that, like the benefits you get from that is incredible. Like. You usually did hill sprints. I remember from the Blue Sisters documentary, like they were doing the Dublin Yeah, the Blue and... Sisters that time. Yeah, so many people have said that back to us. Yeah, the mag that's out there in... Um, the Phoenix Park, um, that is not a fun time. No. <laughs> but no, yeah, we, we love, like, we have got a lot of energy from sessions like that, definitely, yeah. So do you have, like, do you know the way some people love a certain type of fitness session and then others, as in, like, do you have a, do you have a favour? You're just like, no, hands down, I'm not it. My favourite thing to do is play football <laughs> and that's just a side thing that I have to do, so I'm not going to okay. say. <laughs> Conan, what about yourself? I mean... The best and thing I like doing most is um, we do these 10 runs, 15 seconds to do 90 metres and you Mass. have a 15 second break. Yeah, you okay. just do that, but you do it three times throughout the session. So you do that game, that game, that game, and you know it's over in whatever 10 times 15 seconds is. So it's just so very it's, easy to do the You can just cross it off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you know. when you do runs like that, you can trick yourself. Like, 10? That's not that much. Like, yeah. And mm. you tell yourself before and then you're like, wow. Oh, three, 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 four, five. And <laughs> oh, no, I, div- I divide it up. I'm kind of like, instead of it being like, say nine and be like, I'll, I'll bunch it into three and then I'm like, okay, I've got two more left. Like, How would you divide up the marathon as a matter of interest? Oh, um, I just would not do <laughs> that. Still I would divide it up by being like, I'll have One two hobnob, hobnobs yeah. in the first mile <laughs> and then I might like drift into a little purple snack. Maybe. Custard creams come out for oh, the middle. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, mix it up a little bit but yeah. in terms of I am not an injury athlete I'm like I like I like the gym I like short little bursts yeah but um strength. yeah yeah well it's strength, you, girl. you need to be you need to be strong in rugby so yeah makes sense on, would I'll you like. do a marathon I would love to do one but I would never want to do the training for it so I'd love to say I've done a marathon yeah. <laughs> that's such, such an armchair thing like, I, love the I want the all the kudos <laughs> and none of the work but like <laughs> but think about like you're talking about it being an individual sport yeah. but like you have to go out and run for 18 miles and 19 miles and oh like yeah that, randomly during the week training. Yeah, yeah wow no not for me so we've all we've all agreed that none of us are have any desire to do the marathon <laughs> but at she's all she's super impressive but that is very impressive fair play Sinead um, well done and even though you're representing Australia we still think you're great Competition reminder again, as it's our first show, we're giving away ladies All-Ireland tickets and an overnight stay. All you have to do is jump on social media and tag us, play by play. Please say really, really nice things because it's our first time and uh, Mackers is messing up an awful lot. So it would mean it would mean a lot to us if you were nice. <laughs> yeah, thanks, folks. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to move on to a slightly more somewhat controversial area of sport and um, the gender rules so Castor Semenye speaking about that so 
former um, marathon runner Paula Radcliffe believes the verdict of a legal case involving Olympic champion Castor Semenye could open the door for transgender athletes to claim an unfair advantage in women's sport. The Court of Arbitration for Sport, CAS, is expected to rule this month on whether the International Association of Athletics Federations can bring in rules forcing the South African and female athletes with differences of sexual development, uh, DSD, to take testosterone blockers. So Radcliffe basically said it would be naive to think that countries would not actively start cherry picking girls with hyperandrogenism and forcing them into the sport. It's pretty kind of touchy subject. Would you agree with Radcliffe's concerns? I mean, I mean, do countries not cherry pick people anyway? Like you, you pick your fastest and you put them into sprinting, and you pick your strongest and you put them into weightlifting, and you pick your best of football and you put them into football. You know, like this is what this happens anyway. Like this is just another makeup of somebody's genetic disposition. Yeah, I guess like myself and Marker were talking about it a little bit, and 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 you, like you you are right. You pick Michael Phelps because his lung capacity is is huge, and his wingspan is unbelievable. And basketball players that are seven foot have a genetic advantage over basketball players that are six foot. Give me the butt, Jenny. Come on. <laughs> but I think the whole controversy is. Um, I'm not even sure how to to broach it properly. Of there is male hormones present. That's a huge, huge advantage um, to to an athlete. Is it is that unfair to have? I suppose, Oops. like, coming at it from two different angles, like, as a woman, I'm like, absolutely, Castor, like, you do you, like, that's your identity and that's who's made you who you are and everything apart as, like, who you are growing up and everything is part of who you are but then just as an athlete at least there's two very distinct categories like there's male and there's female and there's a reason why I can't play against a, a male footballer and there's a reason why you can't play against a, a male rugby player and I suppose um I don't know I, I would just be thinking of like the girl the other girls competing like they can train as much as they want but they're never going to be able to close that gap because uh, as you, yeah, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Like, you know, Michael Phelps has a really big wingspan, and that's what that why that's why he's good at what he does. But I just I do I think there's two very distinct categories for a reason, um, and I think Castor produces like um, a really really high level of testosterone. Three I think times women the... are supposed to be somewhere between zero point seven and like one, and I think she's somewhere at like a nine or a ten. You know, so it is something that. And yeah, I, I do agree that, well, I don't know, it's it's really hypothetical what Paula Radcliffe said, you mm -hmm. know, but <clears throat> it's like there has been situations in the past where countries have partaken in really shady things like plucking people out, you know, the US, like, or... East uh, Germany. Oh, East Germany, yeah. But then again, that was... That was that was cheating. The girls didn't know they were being doped. But yeah. Semenye, it's 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 she's naturally producing these hormones. Yeah, sorry, no, I, yeah. I didn't mean to say she was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I I no, I agree there. It's it's just I I I think it's one of these questions that there is definitely no simple answer because, you know, if you're putting yourself in the boots of Semenye, you. She's trained so hard. Like yeah. it's not just because she like she had to. She wouldn't have just won if she was just any old, like she still trains so hard mm. to achieve what she's achieved and she's an amazing athlete like and I'm, I, I wouldn't take that away from her but like Paula Radcliffe I think her what she said is a bit extreme because I do think it's very, quite rare like and um, but I think like will there be space for typical women in, in that sport if like could, could that like realise itself what Paula Radcliffe's saying and then that like typical women aren't in a position to compete anymore. Like, do you know, I don't know, like it is, but like, so it's really difficult. I'm not saying either yes or no, because I think. Oh, I don't think, yeah, yeah I don't think Castor, there is. Castor, like, I'm like, he, that's part of who she yeah, is. The, so. the athlete, you can put yourself in her shoes and be like, you go for it. You, because you, you, you work so hard, it's testosterone. But again, like there's, there's limitations to what testosterone can do yeah, exactly. anyway. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, and then and then you're looking at it from a competitor's point of view, and if if that was me playing against somebody like that, 
I'm like, you're trying to look for fairness and I, I think it's very, very hard to find that fair ground because some no two bodies are going to be happy. Someone is going to come out of this and it's just one of those really difficult things. And it's like, for her even, it, like... I think a lot of the media has been quite insensitive to how they've mm. they've handled it. Like those invasive medical procedures. Can you imagine you're you're doing really well as a sprinter competing and then suddenly there's there's questions thrown about you and you've hit eighteen, I think you've just won a title in Berlin and then suddenly you're undergoing medical tests and oh like I I can't even imagine how tough that would be for somebody as well. And then and then I, I know I keep on flip flopping, but you you kind of want there's nothing that her competitors can do to to win unless they dope yeah. themselves. This so. thing about the, the testosterone block, like or the hormone blockers as well. Like I don't know, was that like I'm I'm saying it is like it is a kind of unfair advantage, and there's two distinct categories, like male and female. But then also I'm like, oh no, she shouldn't have to take. Um, hormone blockers because they block they, they can't those blockers like they block all your hormones they don't just block they can't single out testosterone so then like that's blocking other A stuff huge that's, yeah other stuff that's important you know what i mean obviously i don't have the medical press but yeah and the media coverage definitely sort of adds a whole uncomfortable yeah. element to it like you know when you talk about the invasiveness and all the testing and somebody should be enjoying her yeah, career or whatever exactly. it's, it's, it's always with an asterisk almost and then the questions that she faces in press conferences and we were talking about it and even it's just like are you a man and they just straight down oh. the, the barrel like you know just going for it like and nobody yeah. even asking about the performance or the training or anything like that is always an issue yeah almost around it all that'd be the point where i'd start crying on camera like, yeah sorry <laughs> what <laughs> uh, like, yeah oh, i would like... i would be an absolute mess if that was yeah yeah and I know it all comes under the caster case. But I sort of take a bit of issue with Paula's, um, Paula Radcliffe's comments on their own, sort of be taking them in isolation. Yeah. Because I did sports science at college, and um, you know, a, part, a big module on that was biomechanics. And so you take Usain Bolt, and he is like 9.58, around 100 metres, 9.58 seconds. And there's a study, you know, it's probably been disproven since. This is like five, six years ago, that says that the fastest a human could ever run like based on like biomechanically, how fast they can move their legs and how tall they could be, uh, would be nine point four nine seconds. So he's like a tenth of a second, not even away from this like perfection that you could create. You yeah. know, so and they don't like obviously in sports science they don't like the term freak. Nobody really likes that term anyway, but what they use sort of um technically and officially is outlier. And he is just a complete outlier because he's able to do things that that nobody else is able to do either, like you know, and it's not fair. Me, I'd love to compete against. <laughs> you say, well, I I've, I've, I've same, heard but... you scored a crucial goal at the weekend there a while ago, and <laughs> you have a bit of pace about you. So don't like, don't knock yourself. North County in. rivalry. Don't, yeah, I was hoping you'd bring that up. I, I wrote it under the notes, and you didn't. No, even... yeah, he was. It was everywhere. It was like several texts. <laughs> Social media, and he was like, oh, just mention that for Conan. Well. <laughs> It'll make his day if you mention the goal. And it was all in bold and red as well yeah. on the notes. So. And you waited for the cast of Semenya talk? Oh. You just started <laughs> in there when nobody's ready for it. I'm new at this, okay? I'm new at this. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I just think... I think the way it has been dealt with in the media is appalling like absolutely and I can only imagine how she feels like it's absolutely off and it's not helping the whole situation I think there's lots of people who really are, have been in front of camera over the years and all who really seem to enjoy talking about it like mm. it's it's such a big story and it's so controversial and they're like this is my time to talk about it but then there is a person there that like you know what I mean they're talking about mm. and if you ever ask me something like that I probably <laughs> would <laughs> yeah and again like, like somewhere you were saying you're looking at it from an athlete's point of view and you're looking at it as a woman and it's yeah I think you can you can sympathize with both sides I think that's I know it's very much sitting on the fence but that's how yeah I'm kind that's of... I'm not I'm not in a position to like answer anything here but I know like with a sportswoman cap on I'm like oh there is kind of there is two distinct groups like man and woman but then like as just a woman in general I'm like leave her alone Do you know yeah so I don't really know I don't I'm, I'm interested to see how like, this is yeah. going to be an ongoing thing anyway, um, so we will probably touch on it at a later date. 
and mention more goals that you score as well. Yeah, no I pressure. Don't think <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's, it's Listen, not going to be a possibility. Have a of, this is why you don't score regularly because you just don't have faith in yourself. It's no, you're never going to be able to talk about the goal. No, I'm, I'm cheering for Sylvester's because this yeah. kind of this kind of talk is just <laughs> pitiful. <laughs> anyway, we're going to move on to probably the most intense part of this um, whole podcast. Brace yourself. It's it's words of the week. <laughs> oh, do, you like, do you like that build up there? Actually, I would have loved if you guys. Uh, do you want to do it again? <sighs> no, you've ruined it now. It's Grant. I feel like I'm at a disadvantage. I feel like you're a pro. And anyway, I'm not going to make any excuses listen, here. I, I think Jenny will, be, excuses. Jenny will be completely impartial. She's a very good host. She's <laughs> Brian a knows already. I, I like it. I, I like so it. much scoop on Jenny over the years. I don't know. <laughs> Blackmailing. Whoa. Yeah. Right. Mm. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to influence your Listen, decision making. Jim. Don't worry, it's fine. I am unbiased <laughs> and I will be a fair, fair judge. <laughs> Let's have you then. That's my cup gravel. If you're just listening to it, it's just a mug. It's a very nice mug. Okay, we're going to wrap up the show. But first of all, it's probably the most intense part of this whole really, really, really long chat. Um, hopefully good long though, not like, oh, this was painful. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, yeah, long. this is a perfect length. And now we're going to the most, yeah, intense competition phase. Right, so it's... I was in It's words of the week. Okay, so it's going to be from a woman in sport. It could be last week. It could be a historical quote. And basically you guys have to try and get it. These are for points. So there's going to be a, a leaderboard and bragging rights, all that stuff. If anybody at home has figured it out before these two dopes, please let us know on social media. But now I'm going to get to wow. reading it out. I actually feel great because I don't have to do this. So I can be like, oh, I knew this quote all along and just call you guys dopes. So that's what I'm rolling with. <laughs> You're going to kick yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I knew this. Classic. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is my little throat, throat clearing for the quote. Um, Natural talent only determines the limits of your athletic potential. End quote. <laughs> Natural talent only determines the limit of your athletic potential. I feel like it's probably not an original quote because it's something I've heard so often. Or maybe it's just... The, or maybe I've heard that person maybe heard, saying it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's that good that it's stood the test of time. Or you heard it last week. Oh, so it's old. Yeah, or you heard it, it last week. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Like an Instagram meme. Gandhi underneath. That's, that's not, that's not as a answer. woman. <laughs> that's, that's what? Not um, I, I'm not. I'm going to take that as your first answer, <laughs> Gandhi. Okay, um, that's I a, think you missed the point. Here. Yeah, it's oh, not, not. you're in the wrong place. Right, we're going to have to explain the rules of this <laughs> on and again. It's a. It's a woman Natural in sport. Can, yeah. can I have the quote again? I'm sorry. Yes, you can have the quote, Mackers. Natural talent only determines the limits of your athletic potential. Is it me? I am. Soccer. No, it is not Mia Hamm. Was that close? No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> the way you I, feel like, there. I feel like the little pause adds to it. Yeah, you're... Yeah. Pro. Potential. I'm a pro at reading. <laughs> so good at reading. Can you, give well, us, on. <laughs> can you give us an area? Not specifically the sport, but something... Is it an invasion game? Is it athletics? Oh, okay. It's... Um, nets are involved. Oh, what? There's nets involved in every field sport, no? Shut up, Markers. <laughs> this is my game. Yeah, that on. is the clue. Do you it hear Conan complaining? Do you really hear Conan complaining? Job, well, it could be yeah. babbling. To, just bab just let Jenny do it. She's doing a good job. Better do. I feel like that's a good quote. There's uh, nets involved. Serena Williams? No. Oh. Close. Billie Close, Jean correct. King. V Boom! Oh! oh. No! We, that's so unfair. Yeah, right, we have right, our right. first champion. <laughs> One point to Conan and a big fat zero to Mackers. It's only a little game. It'll be up on the leaderboard. It'll it's be only fine. a game, No, Mackers. just see what he did there. So yes, he, he won. He <laughs> kicked your ass. Can did you know it? Did you know the, in, in advance? Well, um, Neve wrote her name underneath the quote, so I actually did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I can't. I'm not in, I'm not in your chair, so I can't say. Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't thanks. worry. You wouldn't worry about it? I was no. so close. So we'll have a, will it be appearances and then score as well? So, yeah, we'll so say at the moment it's uh, Mackers is at the bottom yeah. and then everyone else that has played this yeah. game is, is above her. <laughs> you totally, yeah, you good. just waited for me to guess and then 
Oh, and then he came in with the Good right tactic. answer. Yeah. Don't, don't question the game. Like Jerry you make no a... guesses. You just let me <laughs> guess, and then it's a guessing game. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you Gandhi, and then you went with Serena. Listen, Williams. this could go on for quite a time, so I'm just gonna cut you out and like nicely end the show. Um, so that is all we have time for. Um, to everybody listening or watching in, thanks so much. To Mackers and Conan, thanks a million. You guys Thank were great. You. Thought you were really, really good. I'm never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted from that. Um, so, uh, Marcus, you're going to be joining us on the show next week? Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen, um, but I was giving, you, I was giving you a chance to not suck. <laughs> and no, didn't absolutely. Take it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely be here. Great. So, Conan, we're going to switch you out with, oh. for someone with slightly longer great. hair. <laughs> Uh, so Sarah Rowe is going to be joining us next week. Is that okay? That's a better choice. Yeah. Don't say that about yourself. No, it's That's fine. Look, has she, sco- has she scored a crucial goal? For yes, North actually. North actually. North 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 yeah. Yeah, She's never scored for scaries, though. Okay. What, what is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> what is she doing? That's all we have time for. Thanks to our guests, Mackers and Conan. Absolute pleasure. And um, We'll be joined next week by Sarah Rowe. Year one is going to be joining us again, so class. <laughs> That's some enthusiasm there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's fine. It's grand. They can edit this bit out. Um, thanks again for watching and listening. Uh, jump on social media and let us know what you thought. And we'll see you next week.